Platinum has seen some huge gains over the last couple of weeks. A reduced supply and an increased demand has yielded some big price increases. Can we extrapolate of what is happening to Platinum, to Silver? Is that the future of everybody's favourite metal, but the least favoured metal on the market? Only time will tell. So let's have a good old chat about Silver and Platinum and whether or not they are linked and we can see what is going to happen in the future. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another thought-provoking ramble about precious metals. Now it's been quite the turbulent and eventful couple of weeks for gold, silver and indeed platinum. Gold has gone down quite a lot, silver went up quite a lot and then has come back down and it's kind of sailing level, but platinum has soared. Platinum has been the big winner over the last couple of weeks. And I want to ask today whether or not what we are seeing with platinum right now could be extrapolated back out to everybody's favorite metal, but the least favored metal of them all, silver. Will we be able to see the huge gains like platinum is achieving right now on silver if another set of very specific circumstances come up. Now, one of the reasons why platinum is doing so well at the moment is some news that came out a few weeks ago about the deficit of production. So if you did not know, platinum, very, very, very nice metal indeed to have and own, but it is very rare. Comes out of the ground significantly rarer than gold and of course even more significantly than silver. And 90 plus percent of all of the world's platinum is mined in South Africa. And apparently there have been issues with electricity supply to the mines and that has caused a diminished production for the second year in a row. Of course, with coronavirus as well, interrupting just generally the world, uh, it has most certainly caused this interesting shift in opinion of platinum. Now, platinum is, generally speaking, an incredibly cheap metal, and I've been saying it for a number of years that I think it is very cheap and it should be significantly higher. And that's what, of course, everybody's been saying about silver as well. Silver seems to be very cheap compared with other metals, although I would argue right now, based on my own experience and buying levels, I'd say silver is not cheap at the moment. Maybe gold is cheap, but anyway, we'll get to that in a, in a minute in the video. But platinum seems to have garnered a lot of attention in the last couple of weeks, which is really nice for those that already have platinum in their stacks. And, you know, from my perspective, I have always said that platinum buying for me is about hedging against its value against gold. And my just sheer geekiness from Dungeons and Dragons days past where platinum was worth more than gold. And I just felt that one day surely that would either equalize or go back to platinum being worth more than gold. So is this the start of that? Only time will tell. Another reason why platinum seems to be garnering a lot of very positive movement in price points is its use once again in certain automotive sectors, primarily within China. Uh, obviously, China is a really interesting kind of market um, and barometer of various different movements out there. Often you'll find with China that a lot of the uh, industrial movements that are there are a little bit behind some of the sort of westernized countries like the US, UK, Canada, all of the big European countries as well, in that China just strives for growth, strives for development, and it is doing everything it can to do that. Now, platinum has been seen to be a pretty negative metal for the automotive industry in kind of the developed Western, westernized world, uh, in that it is primarily associated with diesel cars, and diesel cars are not in favor by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they'll be phased out very soon from our lives completely. As a consequence, platinum used in catalytic converters just fell off a cliff. That's one of the reasons why platinum was so low. But China has started using platinum for its catalytic converters. Uh, and that's partly due to the fact that palladium, the other metal that is used for that very purpose, is so expensive. And palladium really is like now to a point where it is worth more than gold. And you know, you really look at that and you think, yeah, okay, maybe there is a cheaper option. And you look at the palladium charts over this last 
couple of weeks, if we do the same look at the chart over the last couple of weeks for Palladium, Palladium has come down in price. Not very much, but it has come down in price. Platinum's gone up, Palladium's gone down. That says to me that there is something a foot with Platinum demand from mines, Platinum, sorry, Platinum demand from industry, Platinum supply from the mines, and that is, of course, fueling the growth that we're seeing there. So as an investment product, as a coin product, is it something that I would recommend? I would never actually give financial advice in one of my videos, but certainly from you know, looking back in hindsight, I'd say it's an interesting metal to look to purchase. One thing that I will say is that the vast majority of uh, sort of local coin stores and smaller time bullion dealers won't buy back platinum uh, at any kind of decent semblance of price, if, even if they do. And it's the major players that you really have to go to. So you are kind of stuck for that. The second hand market is probably your best bet for it. And that is simply tied to its um, industrial kind of properties and use because of the premiums that come on top of platinum. Now, platinum is not an easy metal to work. It's got a very high melting point. Uh, it is very hard to mine, expensive to mine. And so as a consequence, when you buy a platinum coin, there is usually uh, a pretty hefty premium on top of it. And then, of course, in the United Kingdom and the U e European Union, there is VAT to factor in for these products too. So for us in the UK, buying an ounce of platinum is pretty much buying it at like a spot plus 40% brand new. Uh, or on the second hand market, you can often get in at around spot plus 20%. And in fact, at the moment, I'm very fortunate to be working with uh, a private individual who's looking to sell a significant amount of the platinum that he already has. So I will be listing platinum for sale on his behalf on the Silver Forum. Uh, so if you want to have a look at what he's got available, there's a link down in the description below to the Silver Forum where you can go and see the trade section. Uh, and of course, that's probably the single best way to get platinum. Now, I do want to make this abundantly clear. I'm not touting that. I'm not shilling this. If you are interested in platinum and it's right for you in your own personal circumstances, then that is an option for you. Please do not rush out and buy platinum. And that's kind of where I want to uh, take this video's topic in the next stage. Um, there is always going to be, as we've seen in this last month, there's, there's crazy amounts of it, fear of missing out, fear of, oh God, platinum's on the rise, I must get some now. And then, yeah, it's just going to be risky for people, even now buying at 20% over, 30% over spot, you know, you're going to have to wait for a significant amount of gain to do that. The platinum coins that I bought back in, what was it, early January, you know, bought those for about £980, I think it was, a coin. So spot price hasn't even got there yet. Of course, on the second-hand market, like I'm saying, you know, you can achieve a profit on those coins, which is great. Um, but in terms of liquidity, very difficult, very difficult. So it's not necessarily a uh, product that I would recommend people go and jump on bandwagons for. That said, I do think there are interesting moves afoot with Platinum for its industrial purposes. And that is one thing that I want to then tie into silver. Will or can we see what is happening to Platinum right now happen to silver? Now, there is no denying that there has been a huge uptick in the amount of silver being purchased out there from us stackers, private individuals, and people who just maybe jumped on a bandwagon thinking we could squeeze the physical market. Now, whether that came from Wall Street bets or not, probably not, we can put that to one side. There is no doubting that for a short period of time there was a shortage of physical silver from dealers. I can say without a fathom of doubt that the dealers will be able to resupply. In fact, a lot of dealers have communicated publicly that they have and are able to resupply. It just takes a bit of time. And of course, as well, there are going to be added costs involved with that resupply, with supply chains and blah, 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 blah. It's just all, all excuses, in my opinion, to look to increase premiums from their sales price. Um, some of it will be true. There will definitely be disruptions in supplies, but... A lot of what we're going to be seeing in the next couple of weeks and months from bullion dealers is just simply price hiking for the sake of it. And that is really annoying uh, in certain ways, but quite understandable in others. And it's almost a little bit of an indication of how silver could start really taking off uh, if we compare it to platinum. So silver, of course, is a very important industrial commodity. It is one that is used in a multitude of different e uh, electronics uh, and also modern solar technology and renewable energy technology. And that is the big thing that I think will fuel development growth in silver's inherent 
price uh, and drive that silver price up. No amount of paper market squeezing and SLV buying is going to change that. Physical silver is still needed in this world. And yes, the paper markets are, you know, to a very large degree manipulated and are fake in that there is way more paper silver than there is uh, physical. But at the same time, the physical market is a really important key component of where silver's future lies. And I do think that that is going to play a role down the line. Now, when that'll actually really kick in and take effect, is anybody's gain, uh, guess. There is still a humongously large amount of silver out there in this world, and uh, if big dealers are still quite happy and able to source the silver and sell it, then we're nowhere near that crunch point where there will be these deficits in production uh, and over demand on the market. And there have been quite a few uh, commentaries I've seen, I've you know, had playlists on in the background where I've seen people say that, um, you know, it, it only takes Apple to go and buy all of their cash reserves in silver to future-proof. No company is going to do that. Don't believe that. Even Elon Musk is not stupid enough to go and put all of his money into silver. And some people have said as well, if anybody just goes and takes delivery of their huge contracts on SLV, one thing that people don't remember is that taking physical delivery of silver is bloody expensive. If you've, Even if you've got just like a couple of kilos, it's going to cost you a lot in postage. Imagine shipping tons of the stuff with the relevant insurance. Where are you going to store it? How are you going to store it? You're going to need a bloody vault. You're going to have guards, security, security systems. You know, it, it is so expensive. And so if, like, let's put the Bitcoin example here. So Tesla, they built, they built, they bought a bunch of Bitcoin recently. Uh, that's fine. Bitcoin is so easily stored. It is beautifully easily stored. No additional cost really are beyond having some secure software to keep your keys safe. Buying that much money's worth of silver, that's going to cost you a lot of money. And unless you are banking on that silver really yielding a short-term return, it's going to be very difficult to do. That's one of the reasons why the paper markets are never converted into physical delivery. And I think a lot of people forget that. So physical silver is going to be really key for the future. And I do think that that is something to bear in mind for when you are looking to purchase something. Nobody knows exactly when that is going to happen. That's the one thing that I will always say about silver that I think short term shoot the moon from a squeeze or from an economic calamity is very unlikely, but slow, steady growth over time with increased demand on the metal will most certainly come. It's just going to be quite a long time away. Now, I did say earlier in the video, though, that I do think silver right now is more expensive relative to gold. And that's simply just because of the historic ratios that we've seen. You know, a year ago, silver gold ratio was 100 to, 100 to 1. Now it's 60 to 1, 65 to 1. So from my perspective, if I was at certainly with the UK at the moment with sales tax and everything, if I was looking to spend cash on any of the three metals, platinum, silver or gold, Short-term security has to be gold, and that's one thing that gold will always have in its favor over the other metals out there. So lots of really interesting things, even though gold is not a monetary metal, sorry, it's not an industrial metal, it's a monetary metal primarily, it still is better than silver and gold, and that says quite a lot. And one thing that I will leave you with, a nice thought that I will leave you with, uh, my very good friend Yankee Stacking once told me a very interesting platitude, which is that silver is the form by which people settle debts with each other. Gold is the form by which countries settle debts with each other. They're just two different scales, two monumentally different scales. And that is, I think, something definitely to bear in mind. Where platinum sits into all of this, it's certainly not a monetary metal. It's not traditionally been a monetary metal. It's very much been an industrial use metal. I think its future is still questionable in the long term, but we've seen a kind of peaking now of palladium and all of these other metals that could be used in its in, in platinum stead. So its future could be bright. We just don't know. That is basically it for me today. A big thank you to you all for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. That would be very helpful. And if you've enjoyed this content and want to see more like it, 
then make sure you hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video. There's a good chance you'll enjoy some of the other ones that we will do and have done so already. Have a fantastic week, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.